Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti from AnthonyMorganti.com and this is episode 179 of Photo Critiques. And in this episode, I'm pleased to critique the work of Nathan Mullet. Nathan sent me in some really nice shots. This first shot, Existing Light Portrait, I think is really well done. Very nice. Great catch lights in her eyes. It just adds, it makes the eyes come alive. You can see those great catch lights and uh, very nice focus. The eyes are perfectly in focus. I tell you guys, always focus on the eyes. It's very important. Very limited depth of field, f1.8, uh, 50 millimeter lens. If this was a crop sensor camera, that would be around 75 to 80 millimeters, depending on the brand. Um, but, you know, really well done. Very nice shot. This shot here, um, I like that we get a nice bokeh back here, so it's blurred out with the f1.8 on the 50 millimeter lens. The only thing is, it, it's just too much background, I think. This is the star of the show, this right here, this flower. And although you did a nice job of getting it to stand out from the background by keeping that background nice and blurry, it's just a little too far away. So we really got to fill the frame more with that guy. This is a really nice shot. Uh, I really like the, the shot. The processing is just a little touch. Her eyes are just a little too much overdone. And you could see this kind of odd lines in her, in her eyes. And uh, the, the lights in the eyes are kind of cool. But they're just kind of look... Um, I don't know, they look a little alien-like. So I would just tone down the eyes a little bit, and then I think it would be perfect. This is a nice shot. you got this leading line and framing all at the same time. Uh, it's very harsh light, so you did a nice job of minimizing the harsh light and maximizing the rest of it, you know, the beauty. The only thing is now we got framing, and we have a leading line, and it's leading us to the shot. We have some flowers over here, not really a lot. We need something else in the shot. Because you got it framed and because you have the leading line, our eyes need to resolve on something. So we need, um, you know, that little girl that was in the previous shot. Maybe she could be walking through here or walking towards you holding flowers or something like that. That would be a cute shot. A uh, person, a couple walking through, through here holding hands, you know, anything. You know, a dog over here lifting his leg, peeing up against the plants over here. Something. Something to our eyes to resolve on and I think it would help this shot a lot. I like your idea though, I like what you did, and I, I, the reason why I like what you did is because the light was really kinda harsh, and you did a nice job of minimizing it, and that's harder to do than it looks. It's a nice shot, another existing light portrait. Um, let me see, the focus is uh, pretty good, pretty good. Uh, focus on his eye, it's like, on his eye right there is good. Now she, this eye is a little further back, so we're using f4.5, 31 millimeters, so, you know, a lot of it, you know, we have a, a decent depth of field here. What I would suggest, though, is to try not to go so wide. If you could, I'm not at this scene, so I don't know if you could have backed up. If you could have backed up and shot at 85 millimeters, it would have been a stronger shot, only because 31 millimeters tends to distort features a little bit. And see her head is tilted down a little bit and it will tend to make her nose look funny and her chin look funny he's more flat to the camera so he'll be okay but because she tilts her head down all this gets exaggerated down in here so uh, try to when you're doing portraits even if you're taking a portrait of two people three people four people try to use um, as long a focal length as you can it helps um, really the features of the um, face so um, you know just uh, keep that in mind uh, but otherwise this is really a perfect shot very nicely done a lot of times when you have uh, people in the shade and you have little specks of sun breaking through the shade this is tough for uh, the sensors of our camera. We, our, our cameras tend to make this real bright and his forehead real dark. But you did a real nice job of controlling that. And um, really, it's a really fine shot. It's a cool shot. I like, again, really nice focus. See how those eyes are in perfect focus. Really well done. Very nice. The only thing now, um, the legs, we're cut off the legs here. So we really, when we photograph animals particularly, we need to get the whole animal in the shot, unless you're just doing like a head shot. So try to get the whole uh, animal in the shot, and that would have helped this shot a lot. Uh, you did kind of stand up and shoot down on it a little bit, but that's okay. Generally, try I'd like to try another shot, though, is to get down a little lower and shoot level with the bird. 
In this case, though, I think it worked. Uh, you did it, you know, it's a fine job. Now, this was 85 millimeters on your 15 to 85 millimeter lens, and it came out real nice. Just, uh, just got to get the whole bird in the shot. This is a cute shot, really cute. Now, it's a little distorted because we're at 15 millimeters on this 15 to 85 millimeter lens. And you can see she's pushing her chin towards the um, camera. So it, her, and this shoulder's far away. So this shoulder looks real tiny. And this shoulder, which is towards the camera, looks huge. So it's like distorting her body. And then it makes her chin look bigger than it probably really is because she's pushing it out towards the camera. The pose itself is excellent. I mean, this is a really cute pose. It's just at 15 millimeters. It's not where you really should shoot it. You really should shoot it at 85 and back up. And then you'd um, you'd have a really, I think, a better, um, you know, representation of what she actually looks like. Um, you know, maybe if uh, this your daughter or granddaughter or something, um, maybe you're you, you know so used to seeing her and this looks normal to you, um, but you know, if you really look at it and look carefully, you could see how, like, her chin is bigger, her neck up here is bigger, and real like narrow down here this shoulder is real tiny and this one's real big and that's being distorted by the camera or the lens I'm sorry so just um, use uh, that 85 millimeters and I think it would really be a great great shot I like your composition though this shot here um, again we have this really harsh light you caught these uh, flamingos in the shade which is nice but we cut off the legs again so we really want to try to get them all in the shot also, not all the time, but if you have du dual subjects in the shot, we don't usually or often like them to overlap. So we would like this one distinct from this one. The only way, generally, if they're standing together and they're real close and they're looking at the camera and you have like three, four of them, then they could overlap, or, you know, something like that. But in this case, we really don't want one in front of the other. We want some space between them. It's a you know shot uh, typical. Now I said in the critiques before. Actually, on this shot here, you now the exposure, uh, you know everything is perfect. Very nice focus on this shot. When we photograph wild animals in the zoo, the goal is to try to make them look like they're in the wild. So um, you know you might have a you're at 85 millimeters. That might have been the limit of this of your equipment. You don't have a 200 millimeter lens, a 300 millimeter lens, or anything like that. So you know. In that case, you did a great job. I mean, this either way, you did a great job. But if you had another lens, if you had a 300 millimeter lens, a 500 millimeter lens, and you could zoom in and get in and just like get a um, shot of the cheetah's head, um, I think it would have been a really cool shot, you know. And um, it probably, you know, would it, with that, let's say it's a 500 milli millimeter lens and you shoot it, it wide open the back would get blurred so it wouldn't necessarily look like like it was man-made back here it might it might not but it would be a I think it'd be a pretty interesting shot I think that's the last one yep that's the last one Nathan thank you very much for sharing your work with us um, focus you're perfect your compositions really are perfect um, I think maybe you're limited with your equipment uh, that 15 to 85 you use a lot. It's a nice lens. Uh, if you do, try. remember on the portraits, try to um, use them at the longer end. Try to go at 85 and take your portraits at that. And, um, you know, if you have some other lenses, um, especially at the zoo and stuff, those longer focal length lenses will really help you out. Well, that's it for now. I'll talk to you guys soon.